Thank you. It's so great to be here today. It's really honoured to be able to talk to you all. So to start off with, I want to tell a story, and I want you to imagine one of the worst days you've ever had at work. So this story started a few years ago in South Australia, and there was a young apprentice who was um, new on the job, and his job was to go out and repair a generator in a power station. So uh, uh, like, a, like this one here. So he went on site, and when he was there, he made a mistake and he sent what's called a trip signal down the line. A trip signal is a signal that goes from the generator to um, the main control center, and it lets them know that the generator is about to fail, and so the generator automatically takes itself offline so it doesn't get damaged. In this case, the generator was perfectly fine, but it took itself offline, and a thousand homes lost uh, power. So he tried to fix the problem. He called up his boss at work and, and tried to talk through it on the phone, but they, he couldn't really understand the problem, and so they had to send somebody else who was more experienced to help him fix the problem. So it was a 45-minute drive from the main office to where the guy was working, and when the more experienced person got there, the expert just fixed it in a few minutes, just pushed a few buttons and flipped a few switches. So the 1,000 homes lost power for an hour. Now, you might think that's not a big deal, but it turns out in South Australia, when the power company, when, when homes lose power, the government fines the power company, and that costs them a quarter of a million dollars. However, it could have been a lot different. Imagine if there was technology that allowed the um, young worker on site to share his view of the generator with the remote person, and the remote person could have talked him through how to fix that without um, having to drive all the way out there. So today I'm going to talk about new technology that allows you to share your view with somebody else. Have you ever heard the, the phrase, sometimes I just wish I could get inside your head, or I could just wish I could see things from your perspective? So what I'm going to talk about today is, is technology that allows this to, um, become hap to make happen, and how this could change how we collaborate and communicate with other people. So if communication, of course, is very vital, John Pierce says that communication is not only the essence of being human, but also a vital property of life. And over thousands and thousands of years, we've developed new ways to communicate, all the way from cave paintings to the telephone to the modern social networks we have. However, when you're talking to somebody on the phone or you're looking at their, them on a Zoom call or maybe even in a virtual reality environment, seeing them as a character, um, you're always looking at them face to face. And it's really hard to see from somebody else's perspective when you're seeing um, them in the face. In fact, one of the goals of video conferencing is to make people feel like they're in the same space. And sometimes it's said to make people feel like they're being there together. But what wouldn't be better to go beyond being there and to look at technology that can do much better than what we can do with video conferencing? And that's what we've been developing in our lab at the University of Auckland here. So this is one of the earliest projects we did. In this case, you can see a person with um, a headset on, the dis on their head and also with a small camera on top. And with this camera, he can share his view with a remote person. And so in this video, you can see on the right-hand side, the remote user is seeing the video and drawing on it with his mouse. On the left-hand side, you can see the view through the headset. And we're using augmented reality to be able to overlay that person's annotation onto the real world. Now imagine if our young apprentice had this technology in the field, he could have saved himself a quarter of a million dollars by being able to have the remote expert exactly point at what he needs to do to fix it. And of course this technology could be used in many different ways. You could imagine a surgeon using this to share a view of an operating theatre with a remote expert, or maybe even a, a granddaughter going to a museum and showing her grandmother um, these amazing pictures she's seeing. However, one limitation with this system is that it only shares what the person's looking in front of them. And so more recently we developed this system here where you can have a 360 camera on your head and you can live stream a 360 camera view to a remote person who's in a virtual reality headset. And this means the remote person now can look wherever they want and can see um, your surroundings. Not only that, on the remote person side, we have technology to capture your hand gestures and send them back. So on the person on the left, they will see these kind of ghost hands floating in front of them, showing them how to do a task. So you can see a video of this working here, again with the power station example. So here's a person in, in the power station and control room and looking through a pair of augmented reality glasses with our system on his head. And inside his glasses, he sees this ghost hand appearing in front of him. And then with the ghost hand, 
you can now draw um, on the real world, and you can see those drawings appearing in front of you. Um, the, the green square there shows where the remote person is looking, so both people know whether or not they're looking in the same direction or not. And as I said before, the video from the person's head gets streamed to the second user, the expert in virtual reality. And this person now feels like he's standing in the same body as the person sending the video. So wherever he looks, he can see the, um, the view of that, of that person. So with this system, again, our young apprentice could have easily solved the problem without having to have the power go out for a whole um, hour. However, for the uh, remote person, it feels like they're standing in a video of the real world. It doesn't really feel like they're in the real world. So most recently, we've developed this system here where we can chain together a number of 3D cameras, and each of these cameras create a point cloud of the part of the real world, and we can stitch it all together, and in real time, we can create this view on the right-hand side, which is a 3D model of the real world. So this video here shows that working. On the left-hand side is a God's Eye perspective. The right-hand side is a first-person perspective. And you can see here um, a live view of uh, one of our workspaces. And the minute my student's going to walk into the space, and you see them walking in now as this 3D uh, model. Now, of course, there's some limitations. Where the blue is, that's where cameras can't see, so there's some empty gaps. But you can see how this is now making steps towards not just sharing a 360 video, but sharing a whole 3D in environment. So in a few years, we've gone from sharing 2D video to 360 to now 3D, and that has now dramatically increased the immersiveness and how immersed you feel in that space. Uh, it, it builds better scene understanding and also means you can collaborate better with the other person. So you could imagine maybe in a few years' time we'll have a small handheld device and I could hold it up like this and I could live stream my 3D surroundings to anybody else uh, anywhere in the world. So for example, you could be a mountain biker competing in the Olympics, you could wear a device like this on your helmet, you could live stream your view to other people all over the world and the people in, uh, in other places could be sitting on their couches and feeling what it's like to be the mountain biker biking down um, the mountain. However, seeing what someone else is seeing isn't enough. You, always want to be, you also want to be able to know what they're, they're feeling. And so we've also done some experiments where we can add sensors to the environment. So in this case here, we've got a person in, in a VR headset. They're wearing a special glove that measures their heart rate. And then we developed a system where they could share their view with another person. And you can see on the right-hand side, one person inside virtual reality playing a game. We can share their heart rate with another person. And it turns out when this person playing the game gets excited, the other person starts feeling more excited as well. And we can even fake it. We can make the um, artificially en enhance the person's heart rate, and the other person still feels more excited. So we can share f the feelings of one person um, with another. More recently, we developed this system. In this case, we've added um, EEG cap so we can measure your brain activity and also special sensors that are on the faceplate of the VR uh, display. And so we can now use this technology to measure your brain activity while you're inside uh, virtual reality and we can use machine learning to um, understand the emotions you're feeling and have the virtual reality respond to those emotions. One of the most exciting things with brain activity is it turns out about uh, 10 years ago, people discovered this uh, phenomenon called brain synchronization. It turns out if you have two people in the real world doing the same task, if you measure the brain activity, sometimes their brain starts to synchronize with the other person. The phase of the brain waves start to synchronize with the other person. And when this happens, you enter what's called a flow state and people feel like they're working together more efficiently and communicating um, better. You may have heard the phrase, well, I feel just like I'm in sync with somebody else. Well, it turns out sometimes your brain uh, really is. And so this has been shown in a number of real-world activities. In this case, for example, people are doing a finger tracking exercise where you put your finger out, the other person puts their finger out, and you track around in space. And what happens is this. So this is the two brains of the two people, the black dots, so the um, EEG electrodes. This is before they start the activity. They do the finger tracking for a while, then they stop and this is their brain activity afterwards. And you can see these little arcs here. These show the two electrodes that are connected together and in phase. So now these people feel like they're more synchronized. So this has been shown to happen in the real world, but until now, nobody's done it inside virtual reality. So we did the same thing in virtual reality. So here's two people sitting inside virtual reality, and inside the VR, they can see themselves like this. So they can see uh, the other person and be pointing at them, and they can do that finger tracking activity. Now, of course, the thing with virtual reality is you can do things you can't do in the real world. So, for example, one of those things is you can put yourself in somebody else's body. 
So this is that view there. So now when I look down, I can see two pairs of hands coming out of my body. And I can do the same finger tracking activity, but with um, somebody Random else's hands. Emotions. And it turns out when you do this, you get even more brain synchronization. So this is the two brains. It's, it's a bit busy chart, but you can see the lines going through the electrodes. And this is before they start doing the activity. And the, the, the width and the color of the line shows how many connections. So there's a few connections between the two brains. But when we finish the activity, um, when I see from the other person's perspective, you can see these connections here. And the big red lines show now there's a very strong connection between the two brains. So, so far when we talked, we've gone, um, um, so we, we've shown how you can use augmented and virtual reality to um, create this brain synchronization and brain connection and sh look at the world from other people's perspective. Well, of course, advanced in technologies don't uh, stop. And over the next few years, you'll see even more trends like this happening. A couple of very important trends. First of all, the trend towards experience capture. So we'll go from being able to share faces of other people to be able to share uh, places. You know, a decade ago, I could have had a video conference with somebody else, and now I can live stream um, my view with a 360 video. A second important trend is faster networks. And faster networks means um, better bandwidth or more bandwidth for better communication. Uh, 20 years ago, I was using dial-up modem to use computers. And now with my apartment here in Auckland, I've got a gigabit uh, fiber connection. So I can stream high definition video of myself to the world. And the third trend is towards implicit understanding. And this basically means systems that recognize our behavior and emotion. So for example, I can push a button on my phone and I can talk to Siri and Siri understands what I'm saying, or a camera can understand what I'm doing or my expressions on my face. So these three trends together, natural collaboration, experience capture, and implicit understanding, all overlap in this area that we call empathic uh, computing. And so the goal of empathic computing basically is to develop systems that allow us to share what we are seeing, hearing, and feeling with others. So over the, overall, this means that we've got this trend now towards what you might call empathic tail existence, you know, with new uh, technology trends and display technology and capturing space and emotion sharing, all these blend together to create a new type of collaboration. And so tele empathic tele existence means that now you move from being an observer of somebody else to being a participant with them in the same space. You can see the world from their perspective. You can um, change communication from being implicit to implicit communication. You can recognize their gestures or their nonverbal cues. And most importantly, you feel like you're doing things together rather than watching somebody do something else. So in the coming years, we'll have technology that will allow us to know what other people are seeing, hearing, and, and feeling. And for the first time, we'll be able to truly see the world from somebody else's perspective and know what's like to get inside their head. Empathic computing will really change the way we work and play with people uh, forever.